Good morning. You're watching Daybreak on Bloomberg Quint Live, India's first digital live streaming business news service. I am Agam Vakil. Here are the headlines. Asian stocks declined for the first time in four days after a weak close in Wall Street. The dollar manages to hold on to gains. And the U.S. Federal Reserve keeps interest rates unchanged at its current policy meet. It, however, reiterated its outlook for gradual tightening in the future. The U.S. midterm polls saw Democrats gain control of the House, resulting from voter discontent. The Republicans managed to hold on to the Senate. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries has signaled that it may consider returning to production cuts next year as oil prices falter amid rising shale production in the U.S. And the union cabinet has given its nod to sell the government's entire stake in dredging corporation of India to a consortium of four ports. Now moving on and addressing the United States, stocks in the U.S. slipped on Thursday as for the ninth consecutive uh, well, drop in crude oil prices that hurt energy in our companies. And the U.S. crude oil companies has now slumped to more than 20% since early October, meeting Wall Street's definition of a bear market. Bloomberg's Abigail Doolittle of Bloomberg has more in this report. Stocks finished mixed in Thursday's Wall Street session. The Dow did finish with a fractional gain at the close, but both the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq fell on the day. The S&P 500 by about one quarter of one percent and the Nasdaq by about half a percent. But for the Dow, it was that index's fourth up day in a row, the longest such winning streak since early October. And the Dow right now on pace for its best weekly performance since February of this year. Now, all of this after the Fed did hold steady with rates in this November policy meeting. On this, yields did climb off of the lows a little bit, uh, about even at the end of the day after finishing much of the day uh, down slightly, telling you that there was a bid for Haven bonds. And with those yields uh, about flat, perhaps that's one reason the financials, that was the top sector on the day, up modestly, up about three tenths of one percent, helped out the most by JP Morgan and Bank of America. As for the entire sector check. Five sectors were higher for the S&P 500, six lower on bottom energy, down 2.2 percent in sympathy with oil, down for its ninth day in a row, now in a bear market on supply uh, glut fears, fears that there won't be enough demand for the supply that there is out there, and of course disruptions to supply with the U.S. sanctions on Iran. Uh, and another pressure for oil on the day, the dollar. The dollar was up about seven tenths of one percent, its best day since September. When you put that dollar strength together with oil's bear market, Mixed stocks, Thursday's Wall Street session was slightly risk off. In New York, Abigail Z. Little, Bloomberg News. Now, in its first meeting since October's market turmoil and uh, this week's midterm elections, the Federal Reserve voted to maintain the current level of its benchmark interest rate, but signaled that it plans to keep responding to the strong U.S. economy with more interest rate hikes. The next rate increase is expected in December. Bloomberg's Kathleen Hayes has more in this report. At the November meeting, nothing was expected from the Fed. And the big reason why, of course, no press conference. When there's no press conference, it's, it's uh, become the Fed's way under Ben Bernanke and Janet Yellen not to make any rate changes. Wait till there's one next year. Press conference at every meeting. Good move, Jay Powell. Glad you put that in place. <laughs> but it, as for today, um, they did tweak their assessment a bit of the economy, but they did leave clearly in place this idea that they're going to move. Dots go. That's what we got in September when they updated their summary of economic projections and over here you see 12 lined up 12 out of a total of 16 signaling four rate hikes this year well they didn't move today so they've got to move in December let's take a look at those tweaks because they were pretty minor so if anybody tells you about tweaks don't worry it didn't change anything business investment after having looked strong to the Fed is moderated from a rapid pace it certainly did that's just reflecting reality household spending has continued to grow strongly that's good they said the unemployment rate has declined pointing out that it has instead they said it remained low. Overall, though, the economy is rising at a strong rate. Again, that underscores this sense for the Fed that they're going to move. Risks are roughly balanced. If something changes, I suppose they could slow down. But right now, it seems like it would take something pretty big for them not to move. 
And President Donald Trump on Wednesday struck a bipartisan tone of unity with the Democrats who won control of the House while also threatening a warlike posture that, the wor that would hold government off uh, uh, if, if they use their new power to investigate uh, him. Bloomberg's Manis Cranny has this in his report. President Trump is calling for a new spirit of bipartisan politics after the Democrats won control of the House. However, he also warned of, quote, a warlike posture if his opponents use their position to launch new investigations into his administration. The president unexpectedly reversed his antagonism towards the new majority leader, Nancy Pelosi, saying she should again be Speaker of the House. Hopefully we can all work together next year to continue delivering for the American people, including on economic growth, infrastructure, trade, lowering the cost of prescription drugs. These are some of the things that the Democrats do want to work on. It's not about what you have done. It's what you can do. What you have done in the past speaks to your credentials, but it's about what you can do. And I think I'm the best person to go forward uh, to unify, uh, to negotiate. Well, moving on, when it comes to the Asian markets, at this point in time, we're seeing some weakness seep in, and that's indicated in the SGX Nifty as well. So we're SGX Nifty is taking cues from some of its Asian market peers and is trending lower at this point in time by as much as three-tenths of a percent at around 10,590. Of course, this is as far as your, uh, your weakness in your Asian markets uh, go. As you can see, uh, a lot of these um, you know, benchmark indices are trading lower at this point in time. Let's pull up the SGX Nifty then and see uh, and where that's currently trading. And so a quarter percent cut for the SGX Nifty as well. How did our markets pan out? Uh, well, uh, that this was first in trade when it comes to uh, the Mora trading, of course, and we, we will have very little action when it comes to the Mora trading, but if we can actually bring up those numbers here on our screen. Uh, okay, so this is as far as the ADR is concerned. We did see declines through uh, a, a lot of these stocks, and this is largely an account of the weakness in uh, you know some of these uh, companies. Let's take a look at the other set. So we have weakness throughout as far as the American de depository receipts are concerned, but now let's go, go across to road markets and <clears throat> as you can see we did see strength come through of course it was a very short uh, one hour trading session uh, last Wednesday and as you can see we did see about seven tenths percent gains for the the nifty mid cap uh, rather than the nifty mid cap and the small cap indices also moving in tandem with uh, uh, the nifty 50 index uh, among others we also had gains in the nifty banking and the PSE banking indices but let's move on and talk about uh, uh, okay so this is of course IT and metal again advancing but uh, moving on, uh, let's talk about uh, the way FIIs and DIs have panned out. And again, it was a very short session, so we really didn't have too much activity, which is why these numbers are also relatively smaller. Uh, coming down to the contributors list, and again, uh, we did see strength in Reliance Industries, TCS, and ICICI Bank. On the other hand, uh, so what's, what was bearing down the indices to a certain extent was SBI Access Bank as well as ITC. When it comes to the futures and option space, again, very quiet day of trade. Not too much to speak for with less than 1% increase in open interest for the Nifty. Coming down to the Nifty banking futures too, again, not too much to speak for, very little change. But uh, when it comes to your open interest distribution, uh, again, uh, you know, what we're seeing is the 10,200 put with the max OI, and we're seeing more and more accumulation around the 11,000 mark. So that possibly could be uh, the next, uh, well, I would say resistance zone coming in. But we do have a considerable amount of increase in the 10,700 well call, even though we did see some unwinding in that particular call last well, Wednesday. But let's move on and talk about uh, your Nifty put call ratio, and that is at around 1.59, very little change. And uh, the Nifty banking put call ratio also at around, well, 1.11. So that has come off to a certain extent. And in terms of stocks, I'm watching out for uh, something like an Infi beam, uh, which did uh, rise as much as another 14%. So we had fresh longs there. Other than Infi beam, uh, Balkishna Industries, which continues to decline, even though not as much in, in its underlying. And after ba Balkishna, we also have something like an Apollo Tires, which also rose, contrary to Balkishna Industries. So fresh longs there as well. So a lot of stocks out there uh, that we need to watch out for. But uh, moving on, Indian equities uh, began somewhat uh, 2075 by clocking their best Diwali gains in the decade after nearly, uh, well, I would say, well, some time. 
but uh, let's take a look at uh, some of those other, well, I would say uh, concerns over the higher crude data and a weaker rupee as Indian stocks enter the new trading year, which are the pockets of opportunities. Take a look at what these market veterans had to say. The way uh, financial sector is structured in India till about 95, it was all public sector. Correct. Now all the public sector is being given, uh, fortunately, a permission to uh, start the private sector bank, private sector NBFC, mm. private sector insurance, private sector banking, private sector everything, mutual fund everywhere. But they were the dominant player till then, the right. only players. Right. So what is happening is that in every segment of financial sector, the uh, public sector is going down and private sector is coming up. Uh, everywhere else, like insurance and all places, they are healthy. But in banking sector, unfortunately, after 2008, mm. the, the transition was very smooth. But uh, after 2008, uh, public sector banks being the corporate lenders, predominant corporate lenders, right. they, they got loaded with, with the slowdown in the economy, they got loaded with a lot of NPAs. And they are not able to you know, get over it. Still, there, there are problems. Mm. So, uh, and uh, some 11, 12 banks are under PCA, which is yeah. kind of a restricted, yeah. restrictive in terms of lending. where lending they can do, particularly the lower end of the society. So, what that means is that economy is going at full blast. Your industry is growing at 15 percent, whereas number. the players mm. are very few. Some of these global businesses like casinos and perhaps liquor, which are made into India. How, where do you stand uh, on this, some of these? And, I mean, those are some stocks that have fallen in this fall, and they look like good bets uh, to make. So, I think these are themes that I would be attracted to over the next five, ten years, right. because they're great businesses, they're impregnable businesses. There's some great franchises out there. So, whether it's in gaming or whether it's in liquor, or whether it's in some consumption space, those stocks still look quite attractive to me. And a final question, sir. Uh, we've spoken about some of these themes right now. Are there any newer themes emerging uh, from your point of view at this point? Not really, not overarching themes, but what has done in this fall has made individual stocks down 50%, 70%. In the sharp fall, we had a lot of correction. A lot of these stocks are unfairly being punished by the market. Right. They traded single digit PEs, handsome dividend yields, and have good prospects of earning growth over the next two, three years. So I would encourage investors to look for great businesses among them and go and buy them. And this is a good time to buy those uh, businesses. So there's no overarching theme. It is just looking at businesses that have been unfairly punished during this fall. Mr. Choksi, there is a question about whether or not you want to stay with the tried, old, test, tried and tested names in the market cap markets or would you want to go ahead and venture out and perhaps take a little more risk with the relatively smaller names? Uh, how would you go about it and what are you asking your clients to do? Basically, my philosophy is that I first look at the industry, which industry is doing well okay. and out of that I will identify a company right. which is good, that is, and management is first thing. Right. And financial and uh, growth of the company, you have to see but today in the management plays a very big role and uh, I think I am rather going for a small company. I would like to remain with a mid-size or a large company because they can withstand the adverse circumstances. Okay, Mr. Choksi, then I have to ask you what stocks are you recommending to your clients right Basically, now? today we are recommending Deepak United number one. Okay. Then uh, Nosil is second number and third one is uh, JK Paper. Paper industry is doing very well. Right. So JK Paper is there. Commercial vehicle, Jamna Auto is looking very good. Let's shift our focus to commodities then. We have Yash Upadhyay joining us to give us an update with the same. Yash, good morning. Well, good morning, Agam. So in the space for the last one month, we've seen crude oil prices soaring towards the $100 per barrel mark uh, to slumping into a bear market. On Thursday, crude oil futures ended lower by about 1.6%, extending its decline to 21% from its October high, fueled by accelerating U.S. crude production, highest ever OPEC output in multiple years, and waivers for some Iranian, uh, Iranian crude exports. exports. Uh, while the oversupply situation is looming, production cuts might be something to watch out for as the OPEC ministry as the OPEC ministers meet this weekend uh, to consider any potential production cut. As far as the base metal space is concerned, uh, barring, and barring nickel, all the other names uh, ended higher on, on Thursday. Uh, sharp gains seen in zinc and lead, which gained more than 3% and 4% respectively. Gold uh, fell for a fifth consecutive day, its longest losing streak since July, uh, on the back of strong jobs data, uh, boosting speculation that the Fed will maintain its hawkish nuns.
Yash, uh, we'll watch out for some of those commodities as we move into trade today. But uh, moving on, speaking of commodities, the wind changed again in uh, the stormy oil market as OPEC signaled it will consider a return to output uh, cuts next year, potentially making the second production U-turn this year. Bloomberg's Anthony De Paula has more in this report. Yeah, it is a big uh, U-turn uh, from what the policy had been and what the policy changed to even just a couple months ago because they went out of uh, cut mode to let's pump all we can mode uh, in order to bring the prices down, uh, appease some of the customers, make the market more confident that there was going to be enough oil. And now uh, we're seeing some uh, forecasts that demand is going to be uh, slower next year than it was this year. We've got concerns over the trade war, uh, other currencies in consumer countries that are not as strong uh, against the dollar and that's hurting those countries ability to buy oil so these these fears are um, causing OPEC to look and say well you know let's not put too much oil on the market let's not get ahead of ourselves we don't want prices crashing so that's really the impetus uh, for the for this move all right, let's move on to earnings then, what we can expect today. We have Titan Company, which will announce its earnings. And, well, we're expecting a stable quarter. Do remember the last quarter for Titan was very volatile, and that also had casted some well, uh, well, well, aspersions whether or not it could pro go ahead and actually deliver earnings this time around. For this quarter, we're expecting about 23% rise in its top line. That's followed by around another 24% rise in its EBITDA, which means margins should remain largely stable at around, <clears throat> excuse me, 12.6% uh, as against 12.5% year on year. Consequently, however, because of the fact that we have seen a rise in, or rather we are expecting that rise in your EBITDA as well as revenues, profits could rise 20% as well. Again, the key, the most important watchable here will be the jewelry segments business where we're expecting a growth of anywhere between 17 to 30%. Again, it, the studded jewelry will comprise of nearly 30 to 36% of the entire jewelry segment. So we're watching out for that as well, considering it changes margins for Titan. And uh, don't forget, uh, we will also expect uh, about 7% like-to-like -like growth for the watches segment. We have seen recovery for two straight quarters over the previous uh, well, couple of uh, you know, earnings when it comes to the watches segment, and that's something that should show up in this quarter as well. On the other hand, we are likely to see some volatility come through when it comes to revival in eyewear and other segments. But on the whole, considering the fact that we are looking at that 22% growth in its top line, about 20% 20, 20 growth in its profits, should we see that number come come through, uh, well, it, it should be considered as a positive quarter for Titan Company. But moving on, uh, we have Nikki Merchandani now joining us to give us a, 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 a list of all the stocks which will be in news today. Nikki, good morning. Hi, Agam. I'm going to start with Dredging Corp, where the cabinet has given an investment uh, approval of entire government shareholding of around 74%. Bharti Airtel is second in focus on our list today. Uh, Moody's has placed the company under current rating of uh, the current rating of BAA3 on review for downgrades. That's one essential development that we like to keep an eye out. Apart from that, Emphasis is going to be acquiring a U.S.-based intelligence system for $25 million. That's again a counter that should be in our radar. Tata Steel is expected to be uh, in focus given that Thiessen Group net income, according to the press release, the company has stated that they expect the bearing of the cartel proceedings over the net income. They have also gone ahead and revised or lower uh, their EBIT guidance due to production and uh, shipping a restriction in fourth quarter. So that's again going to be having a uh, bearing on Tata Steel, given that the shares were down and out as much as 8% in trade yesterday to the level that was seen last in 2016. Punjab National Bank, the government of India has increased stake in the bank by as much as 5 point over 5.5% and making its shareholding now at 72% in this bank. Goa Carbon has reported October sales number. GSW Steel has also also reported production numbers where it has reported an 8% uptick on those numbers. Two bunch of earnings, two results that we're tracking this morning, MRF, which is not uh, reported as encouraging numbers. Revenue is up by 10% for the company, but then if you look at the net profitability, that's the bottom line, almost 12% down, uh, downtick there. That's mainly on account of 
the slide that we've seen in the operational profits of the company down by as much as 4%. And a barn offshore, well, there also the net losses for the company have actually enlarged. Revenue are down by 33% and the net loss stands at 38 crore as compared to 28 crore seen in the corresponding quarter. This is mainly on account of losses that have come on the operational level. The company has reported an EBITDA loss of 388 crore as compared to the loss of a 234 crore seen in the corresponding quarter. Thanks for that, Nikki. A whole host of stocks to watch out for in moving into today's day of trade. But what about brokerage calls? We have Somit Sarkar Kar now joining us to give us uh, that list. Somit, over to you. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Agam. On the big brokerage calls for the day, first we have is a CLSA on Voltas. Now, the brokerage has maintained its sell rating on the stock, but has cut the target price on Voltas to 465 from 418. Now, according to the brokerage, Voltas reported a weak second quarter earnings led by the biggest fall in its AC margins in six years. Now, aggressive pricing in to clear inventories in a weak market, warranties, commodity and forex impacted the AC margins in the second quarter of financial year 2019 for Voltas. Now, some of this was offset by good execution seen in the project's business. However, the brokerage believes that the stock with an expensive valuation is not ready for such weak earnings and that is the reason why the shares have underperformed for Voltas when compared to the market. Second, we have is HSBC on Phoenix Mills. Now, the brokerage has maintained its buy rating on the stock but has hiked the target price to 800 from 7 now, according to the brokerage, the second quarter earnings of Phoenix Wells were operationally sound as its rental income and consumption from malls grew strongly. Now, with five new malls under construction and existing malls growing strongly, the brokerage is expecting the company's five-year rental income to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 16.7%. Lastly, in the residential segment, the brokerage says that the company has recorded an uptick in sales momentum, but the numbers are still uh, below their estimates. Samit, uh, thank you for joining us and getting us uh, those brokerage calls for the day. But moving on, there is lots to talk about through the course of the day. And you will find all the live market action on Bloomberg Quinn. But there are also a few stories that you should consider reading on the website BloombergQuinn.com. Here they are. The Reserve Bank of India has liberalized the norms governing foreign borrowing from, for infrastructure creation in consultation with the government. Directorate General of Civil Aviation has asked Jet Airways and SpiceJet to take corrective action to address possible issues with their Boeing 737 MAX planes that could lead to significant altitude loss, a senior official said on Thursday. And Netflix brought its checkbook to Asia. The streaming company announced a slate of 17 new Asian original series during an event in Singapore on Thursday, a part of the pipeline, more than 100 projects being produced in the region. Now, the call to include more women in business was louder at the Bloomberg New Economic Forum for and some of the world's most influential women, including MF Chief Christine Lagarde, uh, called for more females to become CEOs as a way to address corporations being too myopic. Listen it. Bring more women to the business. That is an imperative. <laughs> it's true. Two percent of women only are CEOs in the financial sector, and twenty percent yeah. executives are women. Yeah, and we lost three uh, this There's year a big in New York. Waste of yeah. talent. I think, as my old boss Christine Lagarde used to say, yeah. when things get really tough, they usually call in the women to clean up the mess. Exactly. <laughs> I think it's our responsibility to get a seat at the table. So for me, having that power of voice uh, is very exciting. I've got an eight-year-old daughter, and I really encourage her to do her best, have fun, have your say, and make that impact. You cannot survive um, your occupational life just being a woman. You have to have what something in you, and that is what counts. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Daybreak. All you need to know is up next. Stay tuned to Bloomberg Quint Live. It's not about the award. 